Tonight, we're going to give emphasis to the friends who also have beautiful friends. <laughs> and on that note, we would like to call Vanessa so we can give a good introduction to our friend. Um, and we have, many of us have seen, have um, um, been able to um, see him on the web and, and actually the moment that we spent at SSVA as well last month. Uh, but here tonight again, and it is with happiness in our hearts that Vanessa is here again with Carlos. She's bringing up, up two friends, Geraldo and the little one too. <laughs> so we ask Vanessa, pass the word to Vanessa so we can give a proper introduction. Good evening, everyone. I think everything begins when, um, you remember, Chico Xavier had those two years. He was speaking for the Scarnets. You remember that time? That's where our friendship began. Like, really? Like, uh, in the discarnate realm, because Chico Xavier got to know through Emmanuel that m the people whom he was speaking to would reincarnate to do what they had to do. And Geraldo is here. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we are joking, but uh, Geraldo, we met him physically in this life, this April, when we were visiting the house of Chico Xavier in his home city, Peter Leopoldo, Chico's home city. And um, it's something we would uh, recommend to anyone who is traveling. Make sure you go beyond your blood ties and visit the universal family, and visit specially spiritist centers, spiritist organizations to learn, to share, and to get to know. And that's what we did. We were visiting them in Minas Gerais with the group of Portal Saber, which is a great group. And it's a phenomenal experience because at the museum, um, it's I think it's uh, at the level of the United States, the way it's organized, because it's so well cared for. It's really making justice to the legacy of Chico Xavier. And a place that is a must, because Geraldo has many stories to tell, but as he was saying, Chico Xavier is so humble, so down to earth. You can see by his bed, the bathroom, everything and one unique thing that we observed that Geraldo kept there was this phrase everything shall pass the mother Mary recommended he really got it to learn and leave the lesson and the Machado family who is actually family relatives of Geraldo kept a lot of the the letters the exchange with Chico, the legacy, and Geraldo really kept the, tr the torch lighted up for all of us. And thank God he is devoting his time now to bring Chico closer to us because we know he's living. But when Geraldo talks about Chico, it seems that Chico is here. That's the feeling. Like this morning at Kardec Radio, we all moved to tears because... It really felt like Chico Xavier was with all of us. And tonight, um, we can't forget that Geraldo also opened a publisher that is named Vinha de Luz, that is publishing all the unpublished uh, documents by Chico Xavier, uh, which is unbelievable because it brings new light, new explanations. And um, the, the, the interesting thing is that amongst those is the letter that we discussed this morning at Kardec Radio, a letter for those who haven't, haven't had time, but it's good to go there and listen to it. Um, a letter that Chico wrote when he was in the United States in 1966. And he um, wrote to his great aunt, Nair Machado, in English at a time. And the letter has a lot of revelations. Revelations to the point that probably match the talk of tonight. Because it was almost prophetic, if not really prophetic. 
He was writing a letter to a family in Brazil, almost knowing that later, Geraldo was going to come and participate in the dissemination propagation of the Spiritist movement in English and share the news on how we can walk this pathway. So there's so much to talk about Geraldo, but I would say for those who already know him, you know you can vouch for it. He's a great friend and he's a true Spiritist. So, Geraldo, according to Liu's instructions, the podium is all yours. <laughs> and thank you for the opportunity to having me here. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Vanessa, for your kind words. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, the, the subject that we are talking tonight is not an easy one, because we are talking about the transition time the transition time for Earth that we are now experiencing, and re the relation between mediumship and uh, the prophecies. So we're going to go through those subjects. Uh, it is well known that this kind of uh, revelation came a long time ago, right? Uh, we can see in this chapter second of Joel that was also repeated in the Acts of the Apostles, also chapter second, ver versicle 17 and 18, uh, the saying, in the, last in the last days, God says, I will pour into my spirit all on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men, young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Uh, it's, it's a revelation that when the, the time came, come, and it says, in the last days. And for that we can understand, not the end of the world, as some may uh, think about, but the end of a period of time. The transition time between one world and another world. And we all know now, by the teachings of the spirits, that our Earth also is ascending to another kind of uh, time, another time of uh, more elevated souls, more commitment with the good, with the, the truth. And for that, we can understand that's not the end of the world, but the end of a time where the bad things were amongst all, us all, and the beginning of the time where the good will prevail, right? And this time is coming, it's now, and in that time spe specifically, uh, we can see by the, the gospel and the, the teachings that mediumship would be a great mark of this time, and that's why we can see here uh, uh, your sons and daughters will, will prophesy, will have dreams, right? will have uh, visions and everything, so that we can understand that mediumship would play a very important part in this kind of transition. Because we are all medium, we, we have learned that by the teachings of Allan Kardec, in one way or another, we have some kind of mediumship. But this mediumship is evolving, is in a transition. Uh, we can say that um, uh, f through the learning of the, the role of mediumship in our lives, we can uh, kind of use it in a moral way. And this uh, using in a moral way to the good of the others to console others, to bring enlightenment to others, they 
the mediumship would also enlighten ourselves. So it's a kind of evolution that goes to rege regeneration of our lives. And being a factor of uh, evolution, the uh, mediumship would contribute to the evolution of the medium and also of the others. This is important because when uh, we realize that we have some kind of mediumship that can collaborate with the good other, of others, that can be used to console, that can be used to enlighten others, this kind of uh, knowledge will bring us our responsibility to, our, to ourselves, to our families, to our neighbors, and uh, the role that each one of us can play to construct, to uh, ere uh, elevate the world in this transition time. Allan Kardec, in the book The Genesis, chapter 18, would write about this, this time, the signs of the times, the signs of the transition time when Earth would be elevated to a higher level. And he himself chose two uh, medium ship, me, uh, psychographic uh, materials that he received uh, in that time, the 19th century in France. The first of, one of them is uh, a message from Arago, or Arago, which was uh, a, a prime, French prime minister, and also he was a, a scientist, a philo philosopher, and an astronomy. Uh, he, he died in, in Paris, France, in 1846, so that before Allan Kardec started his works, and he uh, wrote to Allan Kardec about those times, the signs that would uh, recognize the changing times. He starts saying, within a particular planetary system, all the bodies comprising it react upon one another. All physical influences are in solidarity, and there is not one of the effects that you designate, designate as great disturbances that it is not a consequence of the combination of influences within the entire system. And he goes on. The turmoil that sometimes manifests within an entire population among the people of the same race is not a fortuitous event, nor is it the result of a capricious act. Its cause lies in the loss of nature. Unconscious at first, this turmoil, which is nothing more than a vague desire, an indefinable yearning for something better, a need for change, is expressed through silent agitation and then through actions that prepare social revolutions which, believe it or not, also have their own lifespan similar to physical revolutions because everything is connected. We, it's amazing how can we see this today, even now in Brazil, with all the, the, the protest of the people protesting in the streets, uh, like here, unconscious at first, right? A turmoil which is nothing more than a vague desi desire. They don't know what, what to, to, to focus, you know. But we can feel that everyone is asking for a better word, for a more justice word, for a more, more kind word, right? And it comes from everywhere. We can see also the, the Arab nations, we can see Europe, we can see the, the North America, everywhere. It's uh, 
a desire for a better world, a better place to our children, to our grandchildren. And, so, and then the spirit of Arago is, uh, continues to say, to teach us, when you hear that humankind has arrived at a period of transfer transformation and that the earth must ascend within the word hierarchy, do not see anything mystical about in this world, but to the contrary, the fulfillment of one of the great unavoidable laws of the universe against which all human you will shall break. So it's, it's a necessary step, right? That the humankind as a whole will evolve and will uh, go to ascend to a higher level of comprehension, to a higher level of understanding each other, to a higher level of social and uh, social justice, and also a higher level to understand ourselves, not as a material body, but and mainly as a, a human spirit that will survive after death and will continue to evolve. And that we have also relations with the, one, the ones that are in the spiritual world, that we can communicate with them and then can, can communicate with us and interact with us. The second uh, teaching message that Alain Kardec uh, is listen, listening uh, is from Dr. Barry. It's in the item nine of the same chapter 18 of the Genesis books. And there's a very, interesting thing about Dr. Barry. Dr. Barry was really a woman, right? <laughs> because uh, he, he was, uh, at that time, a, a British doctor that helped the, the British army uh, with the wounds and everything uh, at the Napoleon Wars during the early 18th century uh, war between France and Great Britain, and he was killed at the war. But when they uh, would uh, have his body to, to bury, uh, uh, they discovered that he was a woman. He was not a man, he was a woman. And at that time, she, she, he, she had to uh, transverse, I, I don't know, to cross cross-dress herself, right, to be a woman, just to perform the, uh, the duties of a doctor. She studied that, like a man, and before, all, all, all her life, he, he pretend, she pretended to be a man, but she was not. And that, this is very interesting. Alain Kardec chose this, this guy or this lady, <laughs> To, to one of his uh, teachings, right? And Dr. Berry says to us, yes, indeed, humankind is being transformed just that it has been transformed in other epochs. And each transformation is marked by a turning point, which for the human species is what the turning point in growth for the indi individual. This crisis frequently, frequently painful and dolorous, carried generations and institutions along with them, but are always followed by a phase of material and moral progress. The spirit world that surrounds you feels the repercussions of all the turmoil that disturbs the world of incarnates. I would even say that it plays an active part. This should come as no surprise to those who know that spirits make up part of humanity, that they come from humankind, 
and must return to it. Consequently, it is natural that they would have an interest in the movements that occur among human beings. You can be sure, therefore, that when a social revolution occurs on the earth, it also impacts the invisible world. All the good and evil, all the good and evil passions become overexcited there, just as they do amongst you. An unspoken turbulence reigns among the spirits who will, who will, make, will, ma will make up part of your world and who await the time to return to it. It's very interesting because uh, he or she is telling us about the connection, the interconnection between our world here on earth and the, the spiritual world and how close the, the, the spirits are to us and all the, the, how interested they are in our world and, out, and also participating in all those movements that are changing our world, right? He also says one very interesting thing. To the disturbances of incarnates and discarnates, sometimes, very frequently, actually, since everything in nature is linked together, are added the disturbances of physical elements. And we can say by his teachings that all the physical disturbances on Earth that we are now witnessing like big earthquakes, uh, big tsunamis, uh, and other, uh, the climate change and everything, they, they are all connected in one way or another with this transition time. And then uh, the spirit of uh, Dr. Berry uh, closes his remarks. Then, for a while, there is a true widespread confusion that passes like a hurricane, but after which the sky returns to being serene and humankind reconstituted, reconstituted upon new foundations are imbued with new ideas, enters a new phase on the road of progress. It is in this period that has just opened that one will see spiritism flourish and bring forth fruit. Therefore, it is for the future more than for the present that you labor. But it was necessary for these labors to be prepared beforehand because they trace out the pathways of regeneration through the unification and rationality of beliefs. Fortunate are they who take advantage of them as to, of today. So it's very interesting because he's saying that the spiritism will flourish only after this big transition time. In in one way or another, all of us that are laboring, that are working to the spread of the gospel according to spiritism, uh, the teachings of Allan Kardec, we are not working for today. We are not working for now so that we cannot expect the fruits now because we are seeding. We are just preparing the, the earth for the future, right? Because as a matter of fact, the spirit world is telling us that the spiritism is, will only flourish after, I mean, I mean in the whole earth, after this kind of tra transition is completed. But we are fortunate to know all these laws today to be able to understand them now and 
we can prepare ourselves to, be, to, to make this, this change in our own world. I mean, every one of us is a word, right? A word of feelings and thoughts, a word of very uh, many much, many uh, incarnations that we have in the past times. And we also are subject to these transition times. Also, it brings us hope, because after the turmoil, we see that they are, they are saying we would see a serene uh, environment, a more uh, comprehensive relations between the nations, between the races, between all the people that will be living on Earth. And for a, 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 a reconstruction of the society, based on new foundations, because all the, the institutions, the old institutions that are, you know, corrupted, that, that, that are wrong, will, will and shall be uh, defeated. That's, that's the main thing that we can expect for the future. Allan Kardec himself com uh, commented on this subject on the item 10 of the same chapter, Signs of Time, and he says, by foretelling the age of renewal that will open up for humankind and mark the end of the world world, Jesus was able to say that it would be characterized by extraordinary movements, earthquakes, various calamities, and signs in the sky. We can see this happening, right? We can remember like the, the huge tsunami in Asia some years ago that took the lives of 300,000 people, uh, people, persons at once. We can relate to uh, the big earthquake in Japan that also was followed by a tsunami, right? We can see the signs in the sky uh, with uh, the UFO uh, movement and the sites of, uh, you know, unknown object, objects that comes and uh, we, we really can see this happening nowadays. On the item 20, Alain Kardec also commented, the generation that disappears will take its errors and prejudice with it. The generation that emerges, immersed in a pure source and imbued with more sound ideas, will imprint on the world an ascendant movement in the sense of moral progress, which will sign which will sign out the new phase for humankind. So we're talking about a generation, its institutions, its ways of living, uh, its prejudices that will pass away, that will be replaced. And we are talking about a new generation of spirits, more mature spirits that are reincarnating now especially now in the 21st century. One time Chico Xavier told me that the spirits from the, the, the dark side, from the shadows, would not be allowed to reincarnate on Earth after the year 2000. Their last chance was the year 1999 to reincarnate here. And all of the ones that will come from that time on will already be committed to the good, committed to love, committed to the progress of humankind. And this is very important. This is very important because these children that are coming now are the children that will transform this world. Will transform this world for a better place, uh, for a regeneration time uh, different from the world that 
we know so well, right? And this man is very special. <laughs> yeah, he, he played a very important role, right, in, in this transition, if you will. Uh, remember uh, the, the script, uh, scriptures, the, the, the gospels uh, telling us about the mediumship, the importance of mediumship in the last days, and we, we can now and now understand the last days and the last days of uh, uh, the, the word of proofs and sorrow, but the first days also of the word of regeneration. And this man played a very important role. He gave his life to the mediumship and uh, to enlighten the word, to console the, the sorrow, and uh, from his uh, early uh, psychographic teachings when he was 17 years old in Pedro Leopoldo, Brazil, until 2002 when he passed away. Uh, he devoted 75 years of his, uh, his life just to fulfill his du duties, uh, helping others, loving others in the name of Jesus our Lord, and giving us all the enlightenment that his 469 books talk about. Uh, from, in this, from 1927 till now, uh, there, there are 469 books of Chico Xavier in all kinds of uh, expressions. Uh, they all talk about this importance in our lives to, to commit ourselves to, to the good, to commit ourselves to doing something in favor of the society, to enlighten the society, to console the sorrow, especially to, uh, to bring Jesus again to the heart of peoples. That's the most important thing. This one a long time ago it was him in his home, uh, in, in his town, in Uberaba, this. And his second book, Chico Xavier received from his own mother, Maria de São João de Deus. The book is Cartas de uma Morta, Letters from a Dead Woman. And in one passage, uh, the mother of Chico wrote, it is up to us to run a grand movement for the restoration of pure beliefs. So this is very important, right? The, the, the commitment that we all have to restore the pure beliefs. This is very important. Not, not only, uh, we are not here to, to uh, proselytism of spiritism. No, no. We are here to restore the pure belief and to, to, to enlighten the world uh, with the knowledge of mediumship, of the existence of uh, life after death of uh, the relationship between the, the discarnate with, with us, incarnates. This is a, a whole new paradigm in our lives, right? We, we can now understand life in a different way, not a materialistic way anymore. We shall have a, a, a spiritual approach to our lives and make something of it, right? In the book of Consolador, the Consoler, Emmanuel Chico Xavier's guide at uh, the question 387, uh, the question is, what is the greatest necessity of the medium? And Emmanuel responded, the first need is to evangelize the medium himself before surrendering 
to the great doctrine, doctrine ta tasks because otherwise you can always run into the phantom of personalism to the detriment of its mission. So uh, if one assumes his, spons his, spons his responsibility with mediumship, the first task is to evangelize himself. Otherwise, he maybe will bring some trouble, right? Uh, we have to, to be coherent between our, our beliefs and our actions, be between our thoughts and our doings, so we can co collaborate with the good spirits. Otherwise, the personalism and many wrongdoings would come alive. And also in the book Seara dos Mediums, Field of Mediums, Emmanuel says uh, through Chico Xavier, being a medium is to be he the helper of the spiritual world. And to be the helper in a certain job is to be someone who helps spontaneously to not overload those who are responsible for the work, right? So it's a task of also collaboration, of, of partnership. Uh, you have to, to, to bring this, the good spirits through your good doing. It has to be a two-way uh, path. Uh, you have to do it yourself to, to be uh, the, the canal, to, to uh, bring good words, good uh, teachings. And our dear Bezerra de Menezes, Dr. Bezerra, through Chico Xavier, also wrote in the book Bezerra, Chico and You, uh, the time has come. The trumpet sounds calling us all to the gospel of the Lord, mean of good faith. Are you ready to erect the new earth that we all desire for our days on earth? He asks. Are we ready? Or are we attached with the old institutions, with the old manners, with the old men and women from the past? Are we willing to do this transition in ourselves? That's the question he's asking us through Chico Xavier. And here's another book, Plantão de Respostas, where Chico Xavier himself responded about the transition times, about the difficult times of uh, this transition. And he says in one of the, the questions, we are so very close to a large planetary transformation, the social, spiritual, emotional, and physical calamities are everywhere on the planet. Emmanuel affirms that the Earth would be a world of regeneration around the year of 2057. I'm going to stop here just to, to elaborate on this. Remember when he told me that those kids, those child, that would be born after the year 2000 would be already committed, committed to the, the better world, to the regeneration world, so if they, they were b born in 2001, 2002, 2010, in 2057, they are already in a position to govern the world yeah. you, at the universities, at the government, at the, the social workers, right? At all kinds, at, at politics also. Politics is, is an institution, right? that shall be transformed, that shall be uh, better 
not for, not for co corruption anymore, not for uh, any, any kind of trade in the materialistic world, but in another kind of approach. And the world is asking that. And no, it's it's going to be better, because worse. yeah. No, I I believe in a better world, because uh, in the book the 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 Genesis, Allan Kardec himself commented on this, and he himself tells that corruption is a very bad thing that will pass. Allan Kardec says that in the new world, corruption will pass. And he commented also that the, the people attached with old, the old world, right, the, the wrongdoings and uh, the, the maladies of the world, that they would be in a position to be ashamed. Because they, from one time to another, they will, will be not anymore the majority of the people, but will turn out to be the min minority and so that they would be very ashamed of themselves and they will be forced to, to change. Otherwise, they will be dispatched for another world. Because nothing stops the, the, the will of God. And one thing is certain, Earth will ascend. That's not a human desire. That's a, 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 that's a, the will of God, as Jesus uh, re revelated to us through Chico Xavier in the book Brasil, Coração do Mundo, Pátria do Evangelho, uh, where uh, Humberto de Campos, spirit, wrote that uh, there was a conversation between Jesus and uh, Elio, and at that time, uh, Brazil, uh, this, uh, the Americas were, were not discovered yet. It was mostly uh, uninhabited. And Jesus was telling Elio that it was God's will that the Americas would be the, pl the place for the new world. And that in the North America, he would situated the mind of the new world. And in South America, in Brazil, he would situate the heart of the new world. And that's, that's very important for us to meditate, right? So let's go on. Uh, but before that, before 2057, th those are, are sayings of Chico Xavier, right? in the book Plantão de Respostas. But before 2057, many different types of transformations will happen on the planet to accelerate the advancement of progress. You see? We are seeing, we are witnessing this kind of transformations. Very few will awaken but many will be able to work with others attempting to awaken the sleeping consci conscience. Conscience. It's, it is a fact. Not everyone is awake, right? But we are glad to be awake. We can say that. We spiritists, uh, the ones that already know the gospel of Jesus, with the interpretation, with the knowings of Allan Kardec, we cannot uh, put ourselves in a way that, oh, I don't know about that. No, we know it. We have a responsibility here. We cannot be sleeping anymore, right? Because we have books, we have information, we have this, the good spirits with us, so that our responsibility is a, very, is a very big one. And we cannot be sleeping at this present time. We have to work with others, attempting to bring this together, these 
teachings together, to bring this enlightenment, to bring this consolation, consolation for the sorrows, for the, the, the ones that are hurt inside, right? And this is very important for us to do. And we have lots, hundreds of books, not only from Allan Kardec, from Chico Xavier, but also from many, many other persons and mediums that are trying to bring us together in this path. This is very important. And Chico uh, completed his sentence. Emmanuel has told us that in some shape or form that all the spirits attached to us hold within themselves the notion of the end of the times. The notion of the end of the times. We can see that in internet, right? From ones that are, which philo philosophy of life are Hinduist, are Buddhist, are uh, even Catholics or Protestants, they all feel that something is different, that something is approaching. And we as a spiritist know since Alan Kardec that this time is known as the transition time, the time between the end of uh, one kind of world and the born, the uh, reborn of a, another kind of world. This is very important. Some will understand this process with an serenity. Look at what Chico Xavier is saying. Some of us will understand this pro process, these transformations, with serenity. And others will have to wait for the painful experience to take their course that plays a part to awaken their consciences. So we have two, two paths, right? One of love, one of uh, pain. Which one do you prefer? You tell me. Which one? Shall we go on the love paths that Jesus told us that that's the best one because it's, uh, it's not a burden, it's a light one? although we have to sacrifice? Or shall, shall we expect the, the pain times? No, no one can really be so sleepy about evolution, right? Loving and working with Jesus is the right pathway, says Chico Xavier. Most likely there will be many painful years we will have to face ahead. But Emmanuel clarifies that God does not permit pain to, e to exist without the necessary remedy to help alleviate the pain. So even we know that we are in a different uh, approach, uh, in a different uh, time, that very, very turbulence time nowadays, economic turbulence, social turbulence, political turbulence, everything. Everything is it's kind of uh, mixed together and uh, seems like everything are not in the right place, right? Bec that's, that's the transition times. That's, that's the time we are facing. But uh, after the, the, the experiences, after everything, uh, we will have our understanding how good this was for us to be part of this world, to be part of this transformation and to take part in this transformation because we have a responsibility to that. Otherwise, we would not be here, right? We would not be incarnated right here in America or in Brazil in the Americas, we have a responsibility here. Here are some books that talk about this. Andrea Luis talk about this mainly in three books. Uh, Os Mensageiros, The Messengers, Missionários da Luz, Missionaries of Light, uh, Nos Domínios da Mediunidade, 
in the realms of mediumship. Uh, Emmanuel talks about that in the, the book 2,000 years ago and also A Caminho da Luz, On the Way to the Light, right? Uh, uh, Humberto de Campos talks about that on the book Brazil, Coração do Mundo, Pátria do Evangelho. And uh, doc Dr. Marlene Nobre and I talked about that, about the, what Chico told us in this book, Não Será, in 2012. Uh, that, this, is, this one is a part of the, the book 2,000 years ago, the chapter 6 of the book 2,000 years ago. And Emmanuel wrote about a, a, a saying of Jesus. So this is not Emmanuel saying it. Remember who, who read the book when uh, Livia was uh, sacrificed at the, the circus, the Roman, Roman circus? And she and everyone that died there uh, went to the spiritual world to meet Jesus. And then Jesus talked to them. That's the part of the book Emmanuel was telling us, chapter 6. And Jesus is saying, when darkness increases in hearts on earth, and they decide to use all human progress for extermination, misery, and death, I will pour out my light on all flesh and all those who reason, who resonate with my kingdom and confide in my promises will hear out voices and sanctifying appeals. A powerful breath of truth and life will sweep across the entire earth, which will then pay the heaviest tributes of suffering and blood for the evolution of its institutions. Exhausted from receiving the venomous fluids of the inf infamy and iniquity of its inhabitants, the planet itself will protest against man man's lack of repentance through natural painful cataclysms. Earthly in, in sorry. Impeditives? Earthly impeditives <laughs> will form heavy clouds of suffering, which at that time, at the right time, we will break out into tempest of tears on the dark face of the earth. Then, from the light of my mercy, I will contemplate my unfortunate flock, and I will say, like my emissaries, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem. We will labor with love in the workshop of the coming centuries. We will reorganize all of the destroyed elements. We will slowly examine all the ruins, seeking materials that can be used again. And when the earthly institutions readjust their existence in fraternity and in the good, in peace and in justice, after the natural selection of the spirits and within the renewing convulsions of the planetary life, we will organize a new evolutionary cycle for the world, consolidating with the divine truth of the Consoler, the definite progress of spiritual humanity. So there's a, that, that's the, the whole part, right? That everything will be restored, that everything will be reconstructed through the pathways of love and sharing uh, a better world, bearing a better place to live, a better place to evolve, to understand, to study, and to comprehend life in a different way. Of course, we have b many 
topics of the Spirit's book that are very interesting about this, and also the Medium's book and the Genesis book from Allan Kardec. Those are the three most important books that talk about the transition. And here uh, we have uh, the chapter 16 of the book, The Genesis, that is very important for us to understand one kind of mediumship that we can call prophecy or uh, foreknowledge, right? Uh, Allan Kardec himself, we, it's, it's interesting because I have, I have heard many uh, uh, sayings, spiritist sayings, that saying that, uh, oh, the, the good spirits don't predict the future, mm. right? And those people forget or forgot that Allan Kardec himself wrote a theory of foreknowledge that is very important for our understanding of prophecy, of the mediumship of prophecy. And we, sh we all should study this chapter, chapter 16 of the book, The Genesis, Theory of Phrenology, that Allan Kardec himself wrote, right? The item three, he says, dematerialized spirits are like the man on the mountain space and length of time do not exist for them. He compares uh, the, the capability of see the foresee the future to the man that goes up in the mountain and can see everything down below, right? He can see everything happening down below. But if he came down to the, how do you say, the, the valley, the valley if he came down to the valley, he, he just see his home or his, his town, and he's restricted, right? And the, condi the condition for the spirit to see the future is to, de to be de dematerialized or be to be spiritualized, right? The extent and penetration of their sight are proportional to their purification and their level of that in their level in the spirit hierarchy. Uh, since human beings must cooperate in the overall progress, and since certain events must result from such cooperation, it might be useful in special cases for them to foreknow these events in order to prepare the way for them and so that they may be ready to act when the time comes. So the revelation of the future is, in a way, useful to us so that we can be prepared when the transformations, when uh, important things come up. In the item four, uh, Allan Kardec wrote, this is why God at times permits a corner of the veil to be lifted, but always for a useful purpose and never to satisfy vain curiosity. It has to be, has to have a good purpose, right? A useful purpose. Therefore, such a mission might not be given to all spirits, since there are those who do not know the future any better than the humans do, but to a few spirits who are sufficiently advanced for the task. It is thus that we see this faculty developing providentially on certain occasions during imminent danger, great calamities, and revolutions. Hence the gift of prediction is no more supernatural than a multitude of other phenomena. It rests upon the properties of the soul and the law governing the relationship between the visible and the invisible world. So it's a natural thing. It's not a supernatural thing. It's just natural. It's, uh, it's one fa faculty, one medium sh mediumship faculty that are given to one's for a certain purpose, to a useful purpose. 
in the item 8 he says such faculty is inherited it's it's is inherent to the state of spiritualization or rather dematerialization thus events pertaining to the future can be predicted it is affected inherent and proportional to the spirit's state of dematerialization so uh, if one uh, can achieve his dematerialization, his spiritualization, he is able to see, to foresee the future. And I ask you now, is Chico Xavier in this situation? Is Emmanuel in this situation? Yes, they are. Their lives, right? Their devotion to the, the spiritualization of us is a proof of that. So that they are, they were capable to bring us some aspects of the future, as Allan Kardec's theory shows us, right? Thus, the final result of an event may be certain because it lies within God's designs. However, since the details and method of executions are most frequently dependent on the circumstances and human free will, the ways and means may be contingent. So we cannot predict the exact time that something is, is going to happen because it depends on the ways and the means of the free will of the people, of the incarnated ones and also the discarnated ones. But they will concur in one way or another to achieve uh, uh, transformation or to, to, to a happening, especially in cases of war, or re revolutions. You, you cannot predict the exact time, the exact day, but you can feel that it's coming along, what, along the way. The Spirit, says Allan Kardec, can give us a sense of the whole if it is useful for us to be forwarded for us to be prepared for it, right? And they are doing that since Allan Kardec's works in the Genesis. They are doing that in the 20th century through the works of Chico Xavier. Of course, they are preparing us for the future of humankind, for the future of the evolution of Earth, right? Thus it is, for example, that by means of the whole of the circumstances, spirits can foresee that an unavoidable war is close at hand or not, but without being able to foresee the exact day on which it will begin or the detail of the incidents that may be modified by human will. This is in the item 14. And in the item 17, he says, they warn us about the future personal of general matters whenever it might be useful and to the degree of discernment with which they are endowed, just as counselors and friends will do so. Thus their predictions are more like warnings that nothing, that take nothing from free will. So they, th their predictions are not uh, taking away our free will, will to participate, right? They are more like warnings. And uh, he closes this chapter of the Genesis at the item 18, saying contemporary humankind also has its prophets. More than one writer, poet, literary person, historian, or philosopher has censored in his or her writings the future march of things that are coming into being today. So it's a much more common thing that we most anticipate. Um, many of, many, we can see like uh, many writers talking uh, or just writing about uh, what he foresaw for the future and like uh, the works of uh, Leonardo da Vinci 
for instance, that talk about helicopters, that talk about uh, many things that will happen just centuries after, right? It's, it's a foreseen of the, the future. And I'd like to, uh, to stop here in this presentation with uh, one thing that is very important for us to know related to mediumship and related to prophecy and also to the actions to the, that the world uh, is waiting on us to do. Thought is everything, says Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. All earthly buildings, all natural wonders that testify to progress are ideal works. Nations, cities, laws are exterior exteriorizations of thoughts. And Neo Lucio, through Chico Xavier, in the 3rd of June, 1942, wrote, thoughts are the primary potential and indispensable to all achievements. So that it's very important that we st stood very careful with our thoughts, with our desires that we communicate our, our, our good will with the, the ones that share this good will, that share our thoughts to a better world, to strong ourselves in this, this best way. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important to be together, to be together in the spirit center, to work together in the spirit center works, and to collaborate together for a better world, because we can transform this world to a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gerald, thank you again um, for this beautiful illustration of these teachings on how mediumship plays in our lives. Um, and it's a huge invitation for us to study more, right? right? To go deeper and deeper, because the more we study, more we find out that we know nothing. And by the devotion and by the, the true dedication of these minds that uh, Jesus himself have allowed and have sent us, and they're, they're send, he sent even more um, to really boost our education, our more education. So it's a huge invitation for all of us to... Um, to study more and to go deeper in the teachings. We would like to open up for questions and we ask that the questions uh, may, may pertain, pertain obviously to the topic tonight. Um, there's a lot, I know that when we, we hear, we go deeper, that we want to ask, that we want to find out more. So this is the moment that we can open up for questions and um, you know, just spend some time together um, as our dear friend have accepted us to, to do so. So if you have a question, please let us know and I will take the microphone so the question can be asked. Don't be shy. <laughs> what would you ask me here first? Um, hi. Hello. Although you say this is a time for turmoil, revolutions, natural disasters, but we see in parallel that human beings are really getting to be more in solidarity. Oh, that's quite true, yes. Uh, I don't believe it's just because the media is spreading this. But I feel that together with these disasters, we can see human beings, they really are evolving. And we are much, much better as a population than, say, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Don't you think? Yes, and I what is the cause? Do you think this calamity may be boosting? Or is there something independent that uh, we evolved anyhow? We would evolve, and now we understand the calamity. We can use it. 
So I want to, you to say if one is a consequence of the other, or it's just a coincidence in terms of evolution. Human being it was supposed to reach this point in 21st century to be more with solidarity, more understanding, have this social you know, connection, or what it is. You know, is it parallel or is a consequence of this turmoil? Yeah, I don't believe in coincidence. This is not a coincidence, of course. Uh, uh, as we study all this, those teachings from Allan Kardec, from Chico Xavier works, we understand that everything is connected. And although we have to face calamity, we have to face uh, revolutions or uh, social uh, turmoil, it is necessary because we also have debts from the past, right? From other lives that we shall commit to uh, do it in a, in a, now in a not uh, in a good way to to restore to reconstruct and and the people of course are more uh, willing to do this uh, i feel also that the people is much more uh, collaborating and much more solidarity to to the others uh, than uh, in the past, right? Yes, I, I believe so. And uh, there is a sense of um, morality that is is spreading out everywhere. Morality on politics, morality on our human relations in our family families, morality in our social work works or in our religion. Uh, movements everywhere. There is a call for this kind of new ideas, new approaches for a better world, better life. Yes, I believe that's all connected. Talking about the new generation, right? 2012 on, we as an adult, parents, educators in general, uh, what elements can we include in the education of the children regarding their mediumship? Specific, how can we help them to educate their mediumship? Okay, uh, the mediumship is a natural thing. The first thing we, we should know is not to, to approach it like it was a, oh, an extraordinary thing that is happening. You, you see, no, that, that's the wrong approach. Because uh, we know, like uh, uh, Andrea Luis tells us, that it's common to children to, to have a more close re relationship with the spiritual world until the seven until the ch child reached seven years old, because they are in a transition, right? They left the spiritual world, and they step up on, on, on Earth, and they are in, in a process to mature their lives here on Earth. And many of them has, still have here uh, remembering, remembering uh, on, of the uh, spiritual world, or they are seeing uh, spiritual beings, but as they mature after seven years old, most probably they will stop that. So uh, it is not uh, good uh, to to provocate or to enforce the mediumship on the children. No, they are not prepared for act as mediums at early ages. They should, be, they should have a, a normal life at school, at the, the, the family, and uh, if they like, uh, of course, uh, the parents like, they should be enforced, they should be inspired to go to the spirit center to learn 
uh, to study, that's more, most important, to study the, the works of Allan Kardec, the medium, uh, the, the, the spirit's book, the medium's book, uh, the gospel according to spiritism, that will prepare them for uh, the mediumship they have uh, after they mature. But I, I don't think, and Chico Xavier didn't think also that we should enforce or should uh, stimulate children to do medium works, no. They're not up to it. Although most of them have some kind of uh, situations or uh, demonstrations of mediumship in early ages. But that's, that's more like a transitional phase that will fade away. Anyone else? Thank you, Geraldo. Geraldo, you mentioned these great minds, uh, Chico Xavier, Alan Kardec, Manuel, all these great minds. And at least as far as Chico Xavier goes and Kardec goes, we know that, or in reference to Chico Xavier, he was this living embodiment of all these lessons and the prophecies and these things to come. But it appears that their life wasn't very easy. And when we talk, and you mentioned a particular passage, I, I think it's from uh, Kardec perhaps, that we won't see the benefits of this work until much later. So when those who are involved in this work sometimes are waiting for that um, immediate result, I immediate result, yeah. the instant gratification, when they don't get it, some give up, get discouraged. Can we say that Chico Xavier was this embodiment of the encouragement that we should have, that we shouldn't wait for that gratification, that we should just keep going, knowing that later at some point the the harvest will be, well, harvested by some, some other future generations? Yes, I, th I think one thing that uh, I, I learned with Chico, and Chico Xavier was always uh, trying to pass with, to us, is, is one thing, that the work is not ours, that we are just collaborators, right? That the work is from God. It's from Jesus, our Lord. So this is, we, we shall not be very, uh, how do you say, anxious, anxious about uh, results, no. If Chico Xavier was anxious about results, he would do nothing. He started with 17 years old in a very, very poor family where uh, only he was uh, employed in, in a family of 17 people. Uh, he did not have a, a, a good life or, you know, a comfort life, no. He was, in, since early ages, committed himself to, to help his family, to help his, his father that was ill, his sisters, his brothers, his nephews, and uh, although he devoted himself to the spiritism, to the mediumship, consoling others after the, the work hours. He worked all day long, right? In the morning, in the afternoon, he worked all day long to sustain his family. And after that, at night, he would devote himself to the mediumship. And he was always happy about that. Uh, he was always telling us that the one happy thing in life is to work in favor of others. And this is mo mo most important, that we shall not expect results right away, that we shall uh, await and see and do our, our best part put our, our heart in our minds, in our uh, doings, in our acts, and God will grow it, like the gospel says, yeah. right? We, we seed, we sow. sow, and God will grow it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now, anyone else? Question? 
Okay. Anyone from the web, Daniel? Okay. Can I ask one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, quite often we think that, you know, when we talk about mediumship is, it, you know, we direct our thoughts, our minds, our feelings towards the ostensible mediums, right? Uh -huh. And we learn with spiritism that, you know, we are, we're all mediums. And I would just like to ask you to elaborate a little bit more uh, with these teachings that you have brought to us on this idea that we're all mediums and we're in, in that in that sense we can all contribute as well be partake in this um, revolutionary moment that we're going through so just an elaboration on that sense as well yeah I think this this here says everything the, uh, why we are mediums because we connect to each other through our thoughts and feelings, right? We are not uh, a word, a closed word in ourselves. We all connect by the thought, by our feelings, uh, so that we shall uh, be aware of our feelings of, and our thoughts, because uh, the, the way we thought, the way we think, the way we feel, we will attract the same kind of thoughts and feelings towards us. And this is, it's, it's, it's like an international uh, network. network, yeah. World wide web of feelings and thoughts, right? So we can connect to anyone just thinking. Just thinking. It's common for, for us in family when you have a close relationship with, with one loved one, right? Just to, just to look, you know what she or he is thinking, right? This is mediumship. And what we should do, we should be prepared for a better mediumship, to a better understanding that uh, if we have our hearts more uh, pure, more clarified, if we have our thoughts uh, liberated from anger, liberated from uh, bad uh, judgment, prejudice, liberated from uh, material necessities that brings us uh, to earth. Uh, if we stood up and see the heavens and see, look up the universe, what is waiting for us, what is a lot of, uh, you know, the many things that we can know, uh, that we can uh, pursue in, in knowledge, many things. That's a whole new world in front of us. And we should prepare ourselves to be a better uh, companion to the others. Anyone else before we... Everyone is quiet. Okay. All right. Well, we would like to thank you again. Well, thank you for having me. For having us. Yeah. Thank you.